Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at some design history tips inside of Fusion and help draw some conclusions for the workflow between SolidWorks and Fusion. So first things first, it's important to note that SolidWorks workflows do have a couple of options. For example, you can create a single body in a part file and insert that into an assembly. You can have a multi-body part file with many solids or surfaces inside of a single part. And you can work in the context of an assembly, making sure that all of your components or parts have an internal reference in context of that assembly. Now, inside of Fusion, things work slightly different. And what I mean by that is we have a little bit more flexibility in how we approach our design. And with that flexibility, we want to better understand what our options are when we get started. So we're going to be taking a look at a couple of examples. But first, let's talk about the design intent. Whenever you start a new design, you need to make sure you understand the intent of that design, as it'll help you better plan out your strategy. In the case of this grill, this is an assembly of components that belongs in a single design file. When we say assembly of components, this means that each component is a container for at least one body, it has its own origin, it has its own coordinate system, and things like sketches and features are inherent and attached to that. So for example, if I activate this, anything that I see at the bottom on the timeline are going to be features or sketches that relate back to that component. This is a handy modeling approach. And if you're starting a new design and you think that your design is going to be a mechanical assembly, it's best practice for you to create a new component. We'll talk about that in just a minute, but let's take a look at some other examples. This shell chair is something that we did in a previous video. Now, this is a grouping of bodies. This means that all the bodies were created at the top level. Now, if you're coming from SolidWorks, consider this a multi-body part. Now, what this means is that all of these bodies share the same coordinate system as the top level of our design. This origin is the origin of our part. Now, all the sketches and features and construction planes were all created, and everything belongs in that same component. Now, this means that if we want to move things around, we have to use tools like move copy or align, and that lets us select bodies and simply move them to new locations. However, we do still have the option to turn everything into a component after it's been modeled. And what that means is that each component, for example, the seat, now have their own origin. When I move the seat or when I move different components around, those origins are tracked inside of Fusion. Now, the benefit here is that you can decide later on in an assembly that you want something to have joints or mechanical motion. Now, why would you do that? Well, really, it comes down to design intent. If you need an exploded view animation for an exploded view in a drawing, or you need better control over the bill of materials or parts list in your drawing, those are two very good reasons why you would want components over just bodies in a design. Bodies inside of a component will be treated as a single entity on a bill of materials, for example, and bodies can't be moved in exploded view animations. But let's take a look at another example, and this is fairly common. If you're just getting started in Fusion and you're importing a design, it may look very similar to some of the other things that we've seen. However, you'll note that the components on the left-hand side are listed as components, but at the bottom, there's no timeline. And that's because by default, imported third-party IGES step files, things like that, they're gonna come in without design history. So we need to turn design history on if we want Fusion to be able to track the location of those components. This means that we can put them back where they came from and ground all these components inside of our coordinate system. Now let's take a look at one last example before we talk a little bit more about some of these design tips. Here is a bearing assembly. Now I say assembly because it looks like it has a lot of different pieces to it. But if we take a look, it's only a single component. In the bodies folder, the main body and all of the ball bearings are individual bodies that belong to that component. What this means is that all of them move together as one. Why is this beneficial? Well, because now Fusion doesn't have to track a coordinate system for each ball bearing and calculate a relationship between that and the bearing race or the housing. So if you're working with assemblies, you first need to think about that design intent. Are all of these components going to move together as one? Do they need to be broken out on a bill of materials or parts list downstream? Do there need to be exploded view animations of them? And those are all gonna dictate whether or not you pick up on a certain workflow. Now let's talk about that workflow. When you start a new design and it needs to have mechanical motion, be an assembly of components, the ideal workflow is to start by creating a new component. The new component 
can be activated, and then anything that you do while it's active, for example, creating new sketches, will be contained within that component. You can still project references from other designs. You can add as much detail as you want. For example, we can create a spacer. We can extrude this up. And this is going to be part of this new component. And again, that means that the new component has its own coordinate system. If we show our coordinate systems in each of these, we can move them around and Fusion will track their locations relative to their original positions and we can capture that location if we need to. Now, why is this important? Well, because we can fix or ground certain components and we can apply mechanical motion. So for example, we can go between these two, we can say that they revolve and we can give them an axis of revolution. Because all of these ball bearings are individual bodies inside of a single component, Fusion doesn't have to do much overhead in tracking their positions or locations. So this is an ideal workflow when you're dealing with complex small parts that have a lot of moving pieces, but in reality, they can all move together as one. So keep that in mind. That first rule is for us to create an empty component and start modeling, thinking about our design intent, whether or not that component has a single body or multiple bodies inside of it. The next thing that we should consider is the order in which we model. For example, on the grill, if we take a look at our component colors, we'll see that this first component here, the main housing end, was the first thing that was done inside of the timeline after our component was created. There are some reference sketches, and then we move right into creating that component. Now you'll see as we look through this timeline, for the most part, those colors are all grouped together. Now what this means is that each of these components was created, all of the features were added, and then it was moved on to the next component. This is a great way to keep the timeline extremely clean, and it allows any rebuilding of the document to happen in order without worrying about all different references between multiple pieces of your design. So whenever possible, create your new empty components and model one of your components in its entirety before moving on to the next one. And this brings me to the next tip when we're going through this. You'll notice here that we've got joints. These joints are going to be the relationships between components that give them their mechanical motion. Whenever you have joints, these can be applied early on in the timeline before you put a lot of detail into your designs. So for example, if we're working in SolidWorks and we have a design that has a bore through it, if we add a mate in the assembly and we go back and chamfer or change the inside diameter of that design, this will likely cause problems with the mates downstream. Because Fusion is capturing everything in this design in order that it happened, this means that we can add joints before any of these features are really added or created. So adding things like chamfers and fillets later on in a design and adding these joints and some of the basic geometries early on means that the calculations are much more simple and downstream changes aren't going to affect how they operate. So that is the third tip there, making sure that we first create our empty components, Second is to create your components in their entirety in order whenever possible. And third is to add those joints early on inside of the design process because downstream changes are not gonna have any effect on that because the geometry is captured in a timeline. With those three basic principles, this should help optimize the rebuild process when you're creating complex assemblies. But there are a few more things that we wanna discuss. In this specific design, we have a very large browser on the left-hand side that contains a lot of components, and in the bottom, our timeline is extremely long. Now, when you have a timeline that has a lot of different features in it, when you activate those components, of course, the timeline will shrink and show you only things that are applicable. However, when we're trying to navigate and find certain things in a timeline, it can be extremely difficult. Because we're using component colors, it's very easy for us to select large groupings of features, right click and add them to what's called a group. Now groups don't mean that anything goes away, it simply means that we can expand and contract it to minimize the impact that our timeline has on the overall design. We can also hover over this. If it's a large group, it'll tell us that it has 47 features in it. If it's a small group, for example, this one, we can hover over it and it'll tell us everything that is contained with it. So if you are renaming your sketches and features or renaming your groups, this can be a very easy way to go back through your timeline and find things you're working on. Other things that we can do, for example, is double click on a component or a face or body that belongs to a component, 
we can right click and we can find this either in the browser or the timeline. Fusion will automatically navigate to its location and highlight it for us. If we right click and find it in the browser, it'll do the same thing, expanding any components, navigating down to that individual component that we're looking for. So these and many more tips can really help simplify the assembly process, making sure that you follow some of those basic rules and better understand your design intent before you get started. We'll be talking about more aspects in other videos, such as internal versus external components for building assemblies, but that should be enough to get you going.